I am a restless person. I always have to be doing something. And yet I can spend all day painting, sitting in a chair, forgetting to get up and have a drink of water, just getting lost in the painting because my mind is going, how do I want this to look? How do I want that to look? When I was probably, I want to say maybe eight or nine, my brother was given a John Nagy Learn to Draw kit. And my brother is not, this is my younger brother, he was not interested in it. And I was given something that I didn't want, so we swapped. I practiced the shadows, the shapes, for instance, a, a ball with light on it. And I learned a lot from that. So that's really where I got it. But I've only been painting watercolors since around 1984. In my mid-30s, my hands and my toes got all swollen and sore, and I was diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis. Very, very painful. Um, so much so that picking up a cup to have coffee, I couldn't really hold it well. Walking was extremely painful. I wore slippers, open-toed slippers, you know. So I went through a lot of years struggling, but I found that I could do watercolors because it's water you're painting with, tinted water. So it was easy for me. And my very first show, I sold half my inventory. When the lady who bought my first painting saw my face and I was, I had to hang her mouth, <laughs> she said, what? This is your first, don't tell me this is your first painting. And I said, yes. She goes, well, my dear, it won't be your last. You are great. I didn't walk on the ground for <laughs> months. <laughs> well, I love landscapes and flowers. I did animals for a while, but I found that I was drawn to the beauty of New York State. So much of the Adirondacks colored my childhood, summer and winter. My parents came from there. I had cousins, my father was one of nine, my mother's one of six, so I had a lot of cousins living up there. I've been to the Catskills, I've been to the Rocky Mountains, I've been to South Africa Mountains, I've been to Costa Rican Mountains, and the Adirondacks is where my heart lives, so they inspire me always. I have um, books of reference, what I call um, inspiration, things that I'll go through, pages and pages of, oh, I like that technique, I wanna use that, and I'll think about it, and I'll mull around doing things, and then it'll come to me, this whole painting will come to me in my head, and then I start. I just finished a bunch of hydrangeas. They're very difficult to capture in that there's so many of them, and each one is a little different, getting the lighting right and the highlights of the, the nuances of the, of the petals and they come together. And most people would just see a blue blob. And I try to get it with all the, the special things that I see the veins, I see the light, I see the edges, um, I see the shadows underneath, you know. And it's tedious, but it's also very relaxing. I don't even listen to music. I just go into the painting, and there's a tickle in my heart. There's joy. I've been very blessed to have sales from the very beginning and the compliments. In fact, it, I didn't think I was worthy to show my work, and I think a lot of artists are insecure about their work. It may satisfy us personally, but if you want to sell, you have to satisfy the client, you know? So when you get somebody who wants to pay you money for what you've created, I can't tell you the high that gives you. <laughs> Especially when you have children to feed, it makes you very happy. I just met so many interesting people from all over the world. One time there was, you know, I was in Saratoga and there was somebody from New Zealand who was gonna take one of my paintings back. And he said, you know, New Zealand isn't that different from upstate New York. Really? <laughs> I was surprised, you know. They are, my paintings are all over the world. I've even had paintings in Japan and China and Russia. 
It sparks such joy in me that that's a drug to me. I never did drugs or smoked or anything. I didn't need it. I had art. <laughs>